Are you ready? All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to IP over DWDM. I'm Allie Miller with Light River Technologies, and today we've collaborated with to show you how to drastically minimize your data center interconnect hardware and operation. Chat box at the bottom if you have any questions. Or at the end of the presentation. Uh, today we have with us Nick Gonzalez, the Director of Sales Engineers with Light River Technologies. Thomas Maj, the Senior Director of Sales and Development with Infi. And Kevin Robinson, the Director of Sales with Smart Optics. And we're going to start it off with Nick. Thanks, Ali. Yeah, I'll share my screen here. Um... Perfect. Thank you. Are you guys able to see everything looking yes. good? Um, you have a presenter view. Uh, I'm in presenter view. Hmm. Um, okay, give me one second here. I got a better idea. Okay. How's that look? Is that a little better? Um, not seeing anything yet. Unfortunately, what we had before was also showing your preview slide, but it also had some grayed out boxes where you maybe had other windows open. Gotcha. There we go. That looks good. Okay. And I'll show my presentation. Everything look good. Perfect. All right. We're good. Awesome. to go. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the patience. Everyone like Ali said. Uh, my name is Nick Gonzalez. I'm the director of sales engineering here. Uh, we're going to talk over about IP over DWDM. Um, and as layer one, layer two, layer three start collapsing, um, we found that IP over DWDM has helped reduce costs um, and also also network operations. I know one of the big things for 2021 is going to be 400 gig ZR. Um, and so we'll have a little bit of an overview of that as well. And so I just wanted to give you guys a little overview of who Light River is. So we're the, the systems integrator, the value added reseller of both the, the NFI optics and the smart optics line system. Um, so we, we pride ourselves in our ability to deploy the most complex next generation uh, networks. Um, as you can see, we, we've deployed three different C plus L nationwide networks. Uh, the solution we're gonna talk about today is more Metro optimized, but I did wanna give you a little overview of, of who we were. So we've been around since 1998. We're based out of Concord in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, we're a multi-generation, multi-technology uh, deployment partner, systems integrator. We, we focus primarily on, on optical. Um, we were, our bread and butter is DWDM, but we, we also support OTN and packet optical and, and MPLS. Um, we have hundreds of customers across multiple different verticals. Uh, we, we also have a homegrown network management system called Netflix, and it has millions of ports under software automation. Um, we've been profitable every year since 1999. And we really pride ourselves in our ability to design and deploy networks. So we ourselves do not make the equipment, but we work with, with partners like Infi and Smart Optics to uh, put together their networks and, and design them. Actually, here at Light River, all of our systems engineers have access to the same design tool that you would get from, from many of the, the optical vendors, and we're able to design the networks and, and vet them out using those design tools. Uh, once we design the network, then we have, a, we have an engineering deployment team, uh, and I call them engineers because we hire degreed engineers out of local universities here. So we've taken a different approach than some other companies. We do not have career technicians. We have engineers that we've pulled out of research institutions in the area. Um, we then train them up how to deploy networks, uh, and, and we have the best deployment team in the industry. Once we get the network up and running, we work with our vendor partners to help uh, manage that network, uh, whether that's giving training, whether that's handling RMAs, 
So here at Light River, we'll work directly with you and with the vendor to arm anything that happens so that you don't have to do that yourself. Um, we also have third-party NOC that we work with. Um, and so it's a, it really is an ongoing engineering support between Light River and our partners to make sure that once the network's designed, deployed, that um, it's also managed correctly. And just to give you an overview of, of some of our customers, uh, I talked about that a little earlier. We are deploying networks for, for two of the, the five same uh, network operators, their, their long haul C plus L networks. Uh, four of the five largest US telecom service providers, uh, three of the four largest utilities, and two of the three largest data centers. Um, really our three, three primary verticals here at Light River are, are the, the cloud and data center, um, as well as the utility industry and then the service provider. Those are really a good three overview of our, of our, vertic uh, of our verticals here. Um, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about our proprietary process that we call ISBN, uh, Intelligent Factory Built Networks. Um, and so this is a, a homegrown proprietary process that we've, we've developed. Um, and so really what we do is we, we architect and design that entire network. And in a lot of cases, uh, there's a proof of concept. There's multiple vendors that a customer is looking at. We will bring those into the lab and we'll have basically a bake off. Once that has been determined what vendor to deploy, uh, our, our sales engineering, systems engineering team will, will design that network and then we will deploy it. And, and our deployment is, is a multi-step process. So basically we have one team out in the field doing full fiber optic characterizations and, and site surveys to make sure that everything goes according to plan. We have a second team back in our factory that is completely pre-building and testing this network so that we catch all uh, out-of-box failures before they ever go out in the field. We're able to get baseline testing and then pre-fiber and pre-label everything so that as soon as we send it out to the field, uh, the final check is all we have to do is run power, uh, install the line fibers, and run a quick test to make sure that everything comes up. Um, we then have a documentation team that will do full as-built documents for each of the, the locations that we've deployed. The intelligence piece is, is our homegrown NMS, Netflix. It's a multi-vendor management tool that uh, in today's environment, and especially IP over DWDM, where you have your optics in a uh, a switch or a router, and then your, your transport over an optical line system, uh, Netflix manages that entire circuit end to end. So it is a multi-vendor multi management system. Uh, we also have uh, a, a lab in Concord at our headquarters. Um, as you can see, we have, we have the Smart Optics and InFi solution in there, and we've tested it uh, over a variety of different vendors that we have in our lab. Uh, we have made all the major optical vendors in our lab so we're able to do any kind of interop testing that, that a customer would like to see as well, uh, especially with disaggregation, transponders from one vendor line system from a second. Uh, we do all of that testing in-house at our uh, Concord labs. Um, and then one of the other benefits of having everything right there in our lab, so our lab and our factory are at the same facility. We're, we're actually able to bring all the equipment in, pre-test it, but we're also able to, to do on-site training and customized training. So this is a big piece of, if you do have a, uh, a multi-vendor solution like, like the InFi and Smart Optics, we're able to give you customized training on, on just that solution. It's not, it's not a canned training where, where you come in and we, we train you on every card that a vendor may sell. We're, we're training you just on your solution. Uh, our lab also has full VPN access. So if you have team members that can't join that training, we can have them log in to the equipment and, and play around with that as well. So we do all that full training right on, on site there in Concord. And then I was just gonna give you guys a quick couple slides of, of our management system that I talked about earlier. This is the uh, Netflix is what it's called. And, and here's a example of some nodes that are under management. So there's InFi Optics and the Juniper PTX and, the, and then a Fuji T600 uh, transponder, and they're both being muxed via the Smart Optics M40 optical line system. And, and the convenient thing about Netflix is it manages that entire solution. So instead of having three different management systems, you're able to manage all of those circuits via one management. Um, here's some example chassis views and, and fiber diagrams. So as you can see, it, it 
draws all the lines from, from the Juniper PTX as well as the Fuji T600 over your smart optics line system. So it's really convenient as you start deploying uh, smart optics and, and InFi type networks and disaggregated networks, the ability to be able to use one management system to deploy, to manage it all. Uh, everything looks the same, so, so your engineers and technicians don't have to learn different management systems. This is a smart optics line system here, but if for some reason you had a different DCI box, it would look and feel exactly the same. Um, so your engineers and technicians really only have to learn one management system instead of having to learn multiple. And finally, the, the bread and butter of this product is what we call our, our circuit analysis tool. And what it does is it goes out to each one of those nodes across the circuit and pulls all, all the PM and data so that you can see your network in real time. It helps troubleshoot circuits across uh, a multi-vendor environment. And so with that, that's the Light River Overview, and I'll, I'll pass it back to Allie for now. Thank you, Nick. Appreciate your time today. Next up, we have Thomas Maj with M5. All right. Holly, could you confirm you can see my screen uh, full uh, for size? Yes, we can see it. Okay, great. Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Thomas. Uh, Thomas Maj, uh, I work for Infi. Um, just a couple of words about Infi. We're uh, primarily a semiconductor company. Um, we make uh, optical uh, chipsets, uh, DSPs, uh, we make optics, we make uh, CDRs, all kinds of PAM 4.5s and so forth. So, and we have been, uh, we, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we are, has been announced that so we'll be joining the, the Marvell Semiconductor Company. So, the second half of next year, we expect uh, we'll, we'll, we'll combine the companies together and, uh, you know, into a publicly, uh, uh, public company, both public companies right now, and we'll have about, you know, $4 billion of sales combined per year, uh, just to give you an idea of the scale of the company. And obviously, this will, will join the uh, ability, enable ability to, to move into the next generation uh, processes, um, which are quite expensive. But uh, going back to um, the focus of this presentation, um, as Nick mentioned, uh, you know, uh, there's a big trend right now in the industry of moving into dis disaggregation. Uh, and we're a small piece of the, the components of the subsystems um, and uh, sort of smart optics and, and really light river is the, the, the force that puts everything together and makes this really uh, transparent, easy to deploy uh, and, and, and very efficient for everyone. So let me kind of jump in and, and talk about the, our contribution to the overall solution uh, and the, the, the focus and application. Uh, uh, in this space. So uh, primarily the product that Infi developed, um, we're, we're really focused on this architectural shift of not only IP to DWDM, but this, this data center space uh, as, as, um, as operators and as content is moving to the edge, uh, users and customers are expecting lower latency. So it's really critical to move that data closer and closer to the users and it becomes harder and harder to, to put everything in these high, gigantic hyperscale data centers. It's just physical limitation of land. Uh, so what happens in cities is that you, you end up distributing your servers across multiple data centers and then these connections are required, DWDM connections. Uh, are, are acquired and they're, they're really the ones that are driving bandwidth growth. Uh, you know, and this is projected to be running at over 50% a year. So a very, very high requirements uh, as, as you run, um, as you run out of space for servers, you got to put them in the second building. You, you might need to put them in the second cage and, and inside a campus and whatnot. So, so at the end of the day, all this has to be connected together and these links are usually high capacity. And this is what we focus on the solution. And also that traffic itself is not only, uh, you know, growing for the users, but also there's more in machine, machine to machine bandwidth uh, for multiple purposes, either just simply the cloud virtualization, uh, it could be just kind of uh, copying back and forth, uh, edge analytics, uh, backups, uh, as well as the content distribution that's really going from the service to the eyeball. So all this is kind of driving that 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 space, which is one of the fastest growing space um, in the and the network, uh, outgrowing uh, you know definitely long haul as as people uh, try to to move the, the localize uh, move and localize the traffic into a certain area. So the solution that we've introduced in 2016, which I'll co cover uh, in this presentation mostly, is what what is the third. Uh, is the third, uh, let me put my, my pointer on, 
is is the the is the cobblers the PSFP module uh, from Infi. So historically, um, there was there was you know that 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 part of the network was dressed with with really large transport system. Then things moved into more like compact uh, OTN type uh, solutions. And and in sixteen, we've introduced the, the PAM for optics, which is really the first IP of the DWDM product. Um, what's been unique about these these pluggables that go into routers is compared to something you'd buy, you know, 10 years ago, like a 10 gig SFP is, is really all the diagnostics, the digital diagnostics available for these optical plugs are almost equivalent to what you find in the system. That's a big advantage of these plugs, uh, that, that, that ability to almost have the, the, the monitoring of your system and the performance of your link uh, coming out straight from the router, uh, router or, or uh, or switch. Obviously, there's a roadmap on all this. We'll be introducing uh, this year. Uh, we've introduced our 400 gig uh, for next generation pluggable, also uh, IPv4 DEM optic uh, in the DD form factor. Obviously, this is gonna uh, still kind of uh, in the very early stages of beta sampling. We'll be ramping later this year, and and certainly we expect that to to reach full scale in a couple of years from now. Um, but it's still it's still right now uh, the 100 gig is kind of uh, still growing and, and this year will be again another record volume, volume uh, uh, year from us. So this product is far from, from reaching end of life. Uh, so the product initially, just to give you history, we've developed that really from Microsoft. That was the lead customer, and this is the slide that uh, uh, Microsoft CTO presented at Ignite 2017, really just kind of um, summarizing what the product is. Uh, you know, it's, it's a really low power, low cost, uh, pluggable uh, DWDM uh, on a 100 gig grid PAM4 uh, plug um, that's able to, to, to enable, uh, you know, fully loaded in a system, 40 channels enables to, to float four terabits of capacity on a point to point uh, basis, typically uh, connecting data centers, but, you know, not exclusively. We've seen applications where people connect uh, exchange points uh, and, and so forth. Uh, and I know Kevin will have a little bit more on the on the use cases and applications, but uh, the product itself is is, is a simple um, high performance uh, KSP28 colored uh, optic. Uh, so in terms of the the basic network configuration, uh, uh, IP of the DWDM, uh, these these products simply plug into to any port, uh, any KSP28 uh, switch port. Um, it does require a line system to combine all the different wavelengths into a single fiber. And then we have about 80 kilometer reach, zero to 80 kilometer reach, and then terminates on another uh, switch or router um, solution. Uh, the, the nice thing that we, we've developed over the years is uh, the system interoperability. And we've been very fortunate and we have very good collaboration with all major uh, switch and, and, and router uh, vendors, Cisco, Juniper, Arista, including really great collaboration also with, with white boxes and, and white box OS suppliers like IP Infusion and, and, and Cumulus. So, so a single part number that you can get from through us from Light, Light River uh, is gonna work on all these systems. So you, you could have a Dell on one end and you could have a Juniper on the other end. And the single part number is gonna be recognized and it's gonna come up uh, just as plug and play uh, by itself in these in these systems, as we have uh, you know great great we have developed over the years a great ecosystem of partners, and we have done quite a bit of software validation testing uh, and to ensure really good interoperability here. So that that that's a that's a nice nice feature. Uh, obviously, you can uh, you know add these these modules in, in you know uh, as a pay as you grow. Uh, you know you don't have to deploy all full capacity on day one. Um, and again, Kevin is going to provide a little bit more color specifically on his uh, their, on Smart Optics contribution to the solution, which is the DWDM line system. So, what what's a huge benefit uh, on IP of DWDM? Uh, it, it's basically the elimination of, of uh, or simplification of, of the system. So historically, in order to go DWDM between two two points in your network, you'd have a bunch of plugs, um, LR4, CWDM, 100 gig optics that you connect. And you basically jump over a couple of meters, a couple of meters between your switch, and then you connect these into a uh, into DCI uh, transport OTN type system, and then these would go. Uh, you know, DWDM to, to your other side. Well, this gets all shrunk and, and replaced by a single plug that goes into a switch router. 
and so that, that that's a huge cost saving um, in the overall solution uh, and in re makes it uh, you know uh, pluggable. Uh, so that drives a lot of benefits from to PWDM, and not only is it opex, but it's also capex savings. So the reason you get all the capex saving really comes from uh, the elimination of this hardware. But there's a lot of lot of opex savings too, uh, mainly from the network simplicity. Um, there's no need to have an extra layer of network management for configuration of the uh, OTN layer, for example. Everything's done just at the Ethernet layer. Um, you know, as these plugs go straight into to the routers, really there's no additional space or power planning required if you need to use another RU. Uh, and, um, you know, we're, we're kind of backwards compatible, so, you know, you get into the smart, smart optics. Uh, line system, you can you can move any existing uh, DWDM optics you have. You can move them back in there uh, into that that line system. Um, and, and as I mentioned before, that that IP of the DDM, that advanced di advanced diagnostics capabilities, uh, really make this really a nice solution. You're you're not just looking at gray optics. You really have that that kind of uh, uh, benefit. Um, in 2016, as the last point, 2017, AGC Research uh, did some analysis. Uh, on the overall cost and concluded that, you know, it's over 60% CAPEX savings um, by using this solution. Uh, and they had pretty comprehensive research and analysis uh, done. Um, and that report is available online on, on their website. Uh, just a couple of points. Uh, so we have been shipping these at scale. Uh, we've announced, uh, I think, late 19 that we shipped over 100,000 of these units. So these units are extremely stable. They're in mass, mass production. Uh, we have, uh, you know, billions of hours of field hours. So the product is, is, is very reliable, um, full production. Uh, and, you know, we, we kind of proud ourselves, you know, looking at just at the port count, we, we have about 30%, 34% uh, market share by port count of all, you know, um, no point to point zero to 80 kilometer uh, ports wor worldwide uh, with this product. And we own almost all the, the subcomponents that, Go to build their uh, that product, uh, the silicon photonics, the mixed analog ICs, the PAM digital ICs. Uh, they're all on uh, owned, designed, and manufactured. Uh, you know, either by our partners, uh, as we are fabulous, but uh, really we we oversee all the testing and validation of the product. Uh, just want to touch base because I think it's really important. Uh, our next generation, uh, second generation colors product, the 400 gig, uh, it's going to use the similar platform as we have today. Uh, obviously, we're moving to a next generation, uh, lower power, more advanced 7 nanometer DSP, uh, but we are using the same approach, um, you know, driver TIAs, um, the, the interfaces, the, the passive alignment, uh, everything's kind of uh, uh, similar. And obviously, uh, you know, this, this product will be kind of uh, forward compatible with a smart optics line system. So if anyone deploying solution today, um, you know, you, you, if you want to jump to, to and you have some ports left over, well, 400 gig is going to just work fine. And we've done already a bunch of interrupt testing, and then we can ensure, we can assure you this, is, this works really well. So in summary, from my side, um, why using N5 for, for uh, you know, up to 80 kilometer uh, DWDM? So it, it's really the, the, the simplicity of the plug and play of the optics. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the, the stability of the product, the, the outstanding reliability that's under 500 sits right now with over 1 billion hours of, in the field, uh, you know, and we are the leaders uh, in next generation uh, products. So, um, you are not only, uh, you know, you have uh, multiple years of, of, of support uh, assured uh, when using these products. So I'll pass it back to, to, to Ali for the next presenter. Thank you, Thomas. And again, if anybody has any questions, there is a chat box in the bottom right corner. Feel free to put your questions in there and we'll get to them at the end. Moving on to Kevin Robinson with Smart Optics. All right, so let's see if I can get this right here. All right, Allison, let me know if you can see that. I can see it, looks great. Perfect. Hi, everybody, thank you for making time today. My name is Kevin Robinson, uh, Director of Sales for Smart Optics here in the US. 
Uh, I'm going to be talking today about uh, simplified DCI and with uh, smart optics line systems. Uh, so with that limited time, I'll jump right in. A little background on smart optics. Uh, founded in 2006, uh, we are headquartered in uh, Oslo, Norway. All of our R&D is out of Stockholm, Sweden. A um, little bit of history. We actually got our start working closely with Brocade. Uh, back in 06 for fiber channel uh, extension over DWDM. So we had a variety of different passive MUXs and DWDM two and four gig fiber channel optics. Uh, and then about nine years ago, we released, I, I think what's can be called the first line open line system out there. At the time we called it uh, the M series or M1601 and it was, uh, uh, really a 16 channel uh, intelligent multiplexer is how we termed it with integrated dispersion and, and amplification and, and designed to be simple to deploy. Um, and about uh, in late 2016, we brought on a new uh, uh, management team uh, with backgrounds from Infinera, Transmode, uh, Ericsson. Uh, new CTO, CEO, and, and we started developing uh, a new platform that we call DCP, Dynamic Connectivity Platform. Um, and it's uh, essentially uh, a, a, a few different uh, open line systems uh, that we developed the next generation of the M series that we call the DCPM. We designed these line systems really in, in close concert with InFi, um, with a thought for the colors and, and colors too. Uh, and uh, hopefully you'll find today that I think we, we did a pretty good job of integrating that and making it very simple to deploy. Um, from a quality perspective, we're ISO 9001, all of, all of those uh, bells and whistles, NEBS level three. Uh, we have a number of uh, partners, switch and router partners. Uh, and really, from a business plan perspective, our goal is to kind of fill that mid-tier gap that, that was really left open by market consolidation of, of various mid-size optical transport vendors. And, and I think it's fair to say that we've had some success with some fairly consistent growth uh, over the last four or five years. Uh, so... Um, Today, I'm going to actually focus most of the presentation on the DCPM family uh, of products, but I did want to touch briefly on, a, um, on our Flex family, the DCPF. Uh, we are releasing that uh, this week, actually, um, and essentially it is a two-degree rotum, uh, allows for uh, rings, fully active rings, as you see here, or uh, fully auto-balanced passive and active rings. So it's uh, some intriguing uh, solutions. It also enables uh, flexible deployment of, for example, 64 channel MUXs for very high density uh, colors two deployments um, with uh, you know, flex grid capable uh, MUXs and, and uh, components. So um, allows for a variety of different topologies and, and um, uh, you know, uh, a variety of different uh, network capabilities there uh, gives us some flexibility. Uh, beyond that, um, late Q uh, or early Q2, probably next year, we will release um, a nine degree Rotom um, and some controller software uh, to go along with that. Uh, so as I said, the focus of today's presentation will be around this M-series product and specifically some of the automation um, and how we handle that. So uh, we have a, a couple of different options on the line system, starting with our eight channel uh, designed around the uh, colors, uh, 100 gig DWDM QSFP28. And then we've got a couple of flavors, if you will, cost optimized depending on your distance, ER, ER plus, and ZR. More on that in, in a little bit. Um, you know, we, we do, as Thomas uh, explained, we love to put the, the DWDM optic directly in the switch. 
Um, that's our, our, you know, it's obviously the lowest latency. It's the, the most cost effective way of doing it. But there are some cases, some, you know, where maybe you might need forward air correction for 10 gig, or uh, you might need a little bit longer distance, uh, might need to go coherent or uh, provide a demarcation point, for example, uh, to hand off a customer or SR4 um, to the client side. So we've got a number of uh, transponders and MUX, MUX bonders to go with the solution uh, as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, the, as I mentioned, the DCPF products coming this week, we've got a MUX bonder uh, that's gonna be coming with the, the multi-degree Rotom uh, early next year. It's common software across the entire DCP product line. So, um, Similar CLI, we've got SNMP, TACAX, PLUS, RADIUS, SYSLOG, REST, COMP, NET, COMP coming. Um, so uh, common software uh, uh, across the system and, um, you know, it, it's working out well. So let's take a look at um, some of the challenges uh, with the new higher speed uh, formats that, that we've been able to address with the automation uh, in our line system. So if you start maybe with 10 gig and, and you think about the, the transmit power output, it's usually around a zero. Uh, if you start getting to the higher rate NRZ encoded um, uh, protocols, 25 gig, could be ethernet, could be SIPRI fiber channel uh, or 32 gig fiber channel. You've got lower transmit output powers. Um, you've, you've got and then you move to pam4 you've got you know e even lower uh you factor in the differences on os and r requirements and the, the different dispersion tolerances of the various protocols and it, it's clear that a, a automated line system uh is is very very helpful in these scenarios so we uh developed the DCPM family, uh, purpose-built, one RU uh, line system family, uh, again, eight or 40 channels designed for point-to-point, -point. Uh, whether it's corporate data center, metro data center, or distributed architectures, we've got customers doing kind of all of the above. Um, with our 40 channel versions, we support all protocols uh, from one gig uh, all the way up to uh, Colors 2, 400 gig ZR, uh, BWDM. Um, it is a completely automated optical setup, so you don't have to be an optical engineer to know how to deploy it. It is it, literally as easy as, as plugging it in, um, powering it up, giving it an IP address, integrating, uh, you know, SNMP MIBs, and then matching the channel of the transceiver to the channel on the front of the MUX. Um, but we'll we'll talk a little bit more about the the uh, automation, um, but you know with the SNMP integration and and, and other uh, pieces, uh, NetComp and so forth, it's easily integrated into uh, any man management system. And as um, as was mentioned earlier, as Nick mentioned, NetFlex uh, full integration with the NetFlex EMS. Um, we do have single fiber uh, options available. Uh, as well, and uh, we can, if, if anybody has those needs, we could take that up uh, directly after. This is our preferred approach, network approach, um, open networking approach, disaggregating layer one from layer two and three. Uh, we, you know, we prefer to put the optics directly in the switch or the router, uh, you know, it saves on latency, saves on OEO conversions of a transponder, saves on space and power, um, and, and really is the cleanest, easiest solution. Um, we use transponders and MUX bonders when necessary. We, ha we have them available, but um, again, this is the, the preferred way of going, going about it. Um, as I mentioned, ease of use, high level of automation, and zero touch provisioning. How do we handle that? zero touch provisioning. On the client side, we have a control loop. Um, we can detect the protocol coming in uh, and um, measure the power levels. 
and then regulate the power levels. And we do that with what we call an OCQ, um, which is effectively a one by one WSS. So we can balance on a channel by channel basis before amplifying. Um, some of the other components here, optical surveillance channel allows the unit to communicate, the units on each end to communicate and uh, set the appropriate settings. Because on the line side, um, we have a separate control loop where we measure the, the fiber length to within usually about 100 meters. Uh, and that allows us to set automatically set and tune the dispersion compensation depending on what's coming in uh, from a client transceiver perspective. Uh, so you noticed in that initial slide, there were different dispersion requirements for 400 gig ZR and 100 gig PAM4 and, and obviously you know 10 gig and so forth. Uh, we are able to handle that uh, on a channel by channel basis and uh, provide basically the best uh, OSNR signal possible uh, completely automatically uh, with these control loops. So the 40 channel family cost optimized in three different versions, zero to 40 kilometer ER, uh, the ER plus 20 to 60, and uh, the ZR supports a full range zero to 80. Um, again, you, you can kind of see the, the inside components there, but, but essentially, uh, you know, to deploy, you have one of these in each data center or each location. You plug your dark fiber into the line port. Um, you've got channels 21 to 60 available on the front. Single mode duplex jumper from here to your switch to the corresponding channel of the colors uh, transceiver. And, you know, add transceivers as you grow, essentially. Uh, you could start with 10 gig. Uh, you can start with 100 gig PAM4, um, and you can know that you've got the ability to go to 400 gig ZR and colors too um, uh, when those are, uh, I guess, generally available um, next year. The only difference between um, the various families essentially is uh, the, a fixed DC, DCM module. Um, the ER has a, a 40 kilometer fixed, the ER plus, uh, and, or, and the ZR has a 80 kilometer fixed and a tunable. Eight channel uh, designed again for specifically for the 100 gig uh, colors module. Uh, so this will support up to 800 gigs. Uh, you can deploy it at any distance, zero to 80 kilometers. We do test it a little bit longer than 80. Uh, so if you've got really good clean fiber, uh, it is possible to exceed that a little bit. And we do have a couple of customers uh, slightly going over 80 as well, but uh, zero to 80, uh, plug it in at any distance and it will automatically set, uh, set up for whatever distance uh, uh, it detects. So here's a, a, an example of a typical deployment scenario, uh, redundant paths typically um, between two sites. Um, most customers or, you know, we don't really have uh, uh, active 400 gig today. We've had a couple of tri successful trials, but most customers are, are N times 100 gig, um, popping the optic directly in the switch or the router, uh, matching that that channel up and uh, doing the same on both sides and away they go. Um, and then as 400 get, comes out next year, uh, be very simple to either add on that uh, at a certain range of channels or uh, you know, fill the whole thing with 400 gigs at that point if, if that bandwidth uh, demands. Number of uh, switch router partners that we also work with uh, in conjunction with NFI um, and uh, we are fortunate uh, to have some pretty good relationships and, and deployments with most of uh, these switch router vendors. So um, to kind of tie it all together, I guess, uh, you know, with our 1610 transponder supports one gig up to 16 gig fiber channel. 
Uh, we can add encryption or forward error correction if you've got the need to go really long distances with uh, multiple 10 gigs. Um, we can do uh, embedded DWDM with, with one and 10 gig or even uh, you know, with our multi-rate DWDM optics, we could even do Sonnet uh, potentially as well. Um, we can do coherent uh, through our DCP 101 transponder with uh, say an SR4 handoff to the switch, conversion to 50 gigahertz tunable, uh, coherent on the line side. We can do PAM4 directly from the switch into the line system, or if you need a handoff, um, we can hand off SR4, LR4, CWDM4, whatever to that end switch, um, and then convert to PAM4 with our 108 transponder. 400 gig ZR colors two uh, supported today, um, being tested uh, and not only in the labs, but uh, at certain customer sites as well. Um, so, uh, that is coming and is supported in our 40 channel line systems today. You have the need, uh, you have existing transponders in your network, we certainly can transport those just as well with 100 and 200 gig coherent CFD2 um, DCOs. Some of the benefits, uh, again, disaggregating layer one from layer two and three, uh, Deploying in this scenario allows you to transport any speed or service from any switch, vendor, or radio. Uh, fully automated optical setup, regardless of signal type, 1 gig, 10 gig NRZ, coherent, any speed of coherent, or PAM4. We provide end-to-end -end optical channel monitoring through a fairly standard CLI, a very, very simple CLI. A couple of commands give you really up to nine points of monitoring across the link. Support for SNMP, syslog, TAC, AXE, RADIUS across our entire DCP product line uh, uh, gives you kind of full control, uh, both from an access and, and monitoring perspective. We can adjust really to any distance up to about 150 kilometers between sites. So with the colors, 100 gig PAM4 module, we're limited to 80 kilometers. But if you had, you know, 10 gig and and or, you know, 400 gig ZR colors too, for example, we could do up to 150 uh, kilometers between sites. And that is a wrap. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kevin. And now to summarize everything, we're gonna bring Nick back in to give some examples of solutions to show the total cost savings using the NFI Smart Optics solution. Nick, I will hand it back over to you. Awesome, thanks, Ali. Um, are you guys able to see my screen, Ali? Is it good? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, so Light River has a unique position in the market. We are value-added resellers for many of the, the optical vendors. So we've had, we've been able to do a pricing comparison and this is just the hardware only. This doesn't even touch on uh, some of the other uh, savings that you would have, such as your, your routing and switching staff doesn't have to learn a new optical box. You don't have to hire new uh, resources to learn optical. Very limited training because the smart optics line system is fully automated. So your, your router and switches guys can actually uh, support it pretty easily. This also doesn't account for the ease of deployment and speed of deployment. So deployments are actually cheaper and faster with the Smart Optics N5 solution than they are with a, um, a different optical vendor. And so just for pricing comparisons, um, in a 40 plus kilometer um, deployment, I've put together a little chart here that I think we can probably share with you guys at some point as well. Um, but I took a various different bandwidth on that DCI band, and, and you can see all the way up to, to four terabits that the Smart Optics NFI is, is a fraction of the cost of some of the other uh, vendors that are out there on the market that have DCI boxes. Um, and so with that, uh, I thank everyone for coming today. And, and Ali and, and Julia, thank you for putting this on. And I'm not sure if we have any questions, but I'll turn it back over to Ali. 
I don't see any questions in the chat box, but feel free to reach out to Lightriver if anyone has any questions. We are here for you. Thank you everyone for your time.